All right, it is 1 a.m. and that means it is time to rebuild a grinder. Here it is. Uh, this is a Grindmaster uh, 870, I think. I don't know. It's it's um it's basically this is obviously just the housing, but it's it's basically just a a coffee grinder. Uh, and it's empty, as you can see, nothing inside. So uh, it's time to go ahead and uh, put this whole mess back together. Let's do it. Okay, first thing is get the motor back in there. It's a single plate. Uh, there's arms that rest on here, and there's a screw in the back right here, and that screw is to um, kind of hold the whole plate up. You notice it's at a different height than the other two, so this actually supports the plate while you're installing it so you do not have to hold a huge half horsepower motor in place. So let's drop that in. Let's try to get all this, all these wires to kind of slide down inside. And I did have to take, let me uh, pull these up. I did have to take out the, the chutes as well as the two buttons on the top to make this come out. Okay. And there we go. Kind of see it in there. Kind of sits right inside and it, it rests. I can show. It rests these two lips right here. Little fingers on that. Kind of show you how that's supposed to go. Kind of looks like that. So that rests on this back screw. And those two screws hold that plate in. And on the front. Those two screws up inside there, hold that on, you can kind of see the finger right there uh, resting on that shelf. Alright, so there's two screws here, however, I didn't do a very good job cleaning that out. Let me turn my fan down a little. The whole point of this is to get rid of all the coffee residue. Uh, this is a pretty old unit. Uh, the motor says it was rebuilt in, uh, or reinstalled in 98, so. Um, yeah, the basic idea here was just to get rid of all the kind of caked in residues from all the old coffee that's been run through here. Uh, we're going to be using this unit mainly to brew cold brew, so we're trying to get to do a, um, um, a very coarse grind. And uh, one thing we don't want to do is get a lot of, like, if there's, uh, there's flavored coffees that run through, uh, you tend to get those oils, the flavoring oils and whatnot build up in here, and that can affect the, the flavor of coffee you run through later on. So I wanted to give it a full, really, really good clean. All right, so that's good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bolt in the back side. Rotate this. Okay, so uh, let me see if I can remember which screws go where here. Uh, there's the two on the back here. Uh, one screws a little bit of junk in it. It's gonna kind of carve out some of that. Uh, who knows what it is? Some old coffee, maybe some something from the surface that was laid down on and dragged across. Just gonna go ahead and clean that out. Get my number two, and those look like they're lining up. Go ahead and thread that in. Okay. And these are all self tappers. They don't use any kind of machine screws in here except on the except to hold in the uh, the chute and a couple other things up front. Uh, ground screws here on the bottom. Uh, Heiko for the line in. They rotate this. I'm gonna leave the the front 
off it for now, just so that it's a little easier to get in here, because I'm not through this wiring. Uh, everything's on the bottom, so there's a relay and a star cap that I live on the bottom. Uh, this is your uh, bag switch on the front, uh, and these lines, these lines here, uh, there's another one that comes in from the cord. They run up to this guy right here, which I'm going to go ahead and reinstall. So this is the circuit breaker. Fits in there like so. And actually, look, I should probably look to see if there's a direction. No, this is a, there we go. Mechanical products, Jackson, Michigan. So I'm just going to put these outwards, a little easier for me to get to. It's got a backing nut, it determines how far this thread's on. I'll go ahead and I think that's supposed to be onto there. This is supposed to be small on the front. Come on. So that lock down on the back will keep it from rotating when I tighten this front down. So I'm going to put that sticker on the kind of upside down, which is kind of silly. Now it looks about good. It's flush. I'll hold onto it and use this guy to just kind of snug this up. Okay. Let's get it in there. Let me grab the cord. Regular cord here. Not in too bad of condition. It's pretty flexible. Got a Heiko. So I'm going to run this into the back. So, uh, ow. So you might notice this is cut. Uh, I actually went ahead and cut this off um, just so that, uh, mainly because it was butt spliced inside, so I just cut this off. Well good, I already went ahead and injured myself. Uh, this case is really sharp, gotta be careful. Alright, um, I'm going to put in the cord here, feed this into the back, into there. This Heiko goes in, uh, it's easy if you've got just some kind of nail nose pliers. The key here is just to compress the Heiko so it slides inside. Go ahead and do that. There's a little piece that compresses down. So you kind of squish that in there or pop inside. Heiko locks in place straight away. Alright, so we're going to take this back around without destroying these cables here. Uh, One side, uh, this is the black wire here, goes into the breaker. And then the other side, other black that's coming down from the relay goes into the other side of the breaker. So that gives us the power, the main power disconnect. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna have to butt splice this back into the white wire coming in from the motor. All right, a little better view of the inside here. Um, so you can kind of see what's going on now. Um, we've got the starter cap and we've got a relay in here. The relay is just basically a push button on, push button off up top. So uh, the only thing I gotta do is I connect this uh, neutral wire from the power cord into this other guy up here. So I'm gonna grab a butt splice really quick. All right, I went ahead and decided on something different here, a little different uh, in the interest of being able to take this thing apart again easily. Uh, instead of instead of uh, joining this with a um, with a butt splice, I'm going to join it with a simple uh, blade style connector. So this guy will, will, will click together. It's really sturdy. And the idea here is I can just unplug this and can disassemble the whole unit again if I need to. So uh, let me go ahead and do that. Got the clines. Probably could have done this outside of the case, but it made things a little easier. Okay. Do the same with this. Okay. So those are nice, looking good. Okay. Slide that into there. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just use that as a socket. Put this in the insulated terminal. 
shrimp bag. Okay, so that's good. Do the matching side in here. Be really careful on these edges. These are some sharp edges. Let me tell you what. They don't break any of these edges on this case. It is all just bent sheet metal. And that is nice and tight on there. All right, so hook these two together. I think that's right. Yeah. There we go. Nice and firm. That ain't going nowhere. All right, uh, next up, uh, these two grounds. These two grounds are going to lock down to the case. Go ahead and uh, move this, this, move this bag switch out of the way. Um, should have two. I got one here. Uh, it's just a simple screw. It should have another. Uh, just a minute. Ah, oh, there it is. All right, two. So uh, these come from the back. And this guy just kind of basically goes right on top of that. You know, so the camera's a little hard, but there we go. See if I can get you a better angle. All right, there you go. Hopefully that's a bit easier to see. Um, do the same thing with this guy. In underneath, attach that ground wire. I don't know why they're using two separate grounds going through the case. They only just use one, but that's how they do it. Just need a, uh, it's a nine millimeter. Go ahead and clamp these down. are in. Uh, so we're good to go on that. Uh, should have our 110 stuff hooked up. Uh, relays hooked up, motors hooked up. Uh, next we gotta hook up the um, hook up the wires and the switch on top. So let me move it. All right, kind of difficult to get a good angle here, but let's see what we can do. Um, we'll go ahead and wipe these switches off. We got two switches start and stop. Um, just pretty simple, just single push, click, click. Um, you can kind of see that if it comes in focus. There you go. Simple start and stop. Got a couple of these guys. Uh, you stack, uh, start goes on top, uh, stop goes on the bottom. So, just basically to insert these, and they should just kind of click right in. Okay. Now there's uh, four wires here that hook onto them. Unfortunately, I don't know how those go. So, let me get out my trusty phone here really quick. Uh, so, basically I got that. Just kind of like a diagram of how they, how they go in. So I just need to wire it like that. So let me just go ahead and replicate that down here. Uh, let's see. Looks like we have the black wire here goes on the top, like so. Uh, double red wire goes just beneath it. Okay. And then we've got the red wire goes to the top of the second switch. And the orange wire goes below that. Alright. There we go. So I think we've replicated that. Hopefully no fire. But it does appear to match my picture. Good idea to take pictures before you do this stuff. All right, next thing to go in is gonna be the um, the bottom here. Uh, the only problem is that this is a little bent. Uh, this is not straight. I'm gonna go ahead and just see if I can't tap that back out really quick. Um, so. I'm just gonna use this normal hammer on the side of my workbench here. So I can just kind of 
Hope none of my roommates are up. All right, that's uh, straighten things out a little bit better. I don't really remember which way this goes on, but I'm gonna guess because of the fact that 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 platform on the front has kind of a scoured surface, and it seems to almost exactly match that. I'm going to guess this might be how this, this is bent too. Uh, that might go there in the front because literally there's nothing in the back that would make that work. Also, this lines up perfectly with this side here and this this uh, discoloration. So, uh, this lip here goes towards the back of the machine. So, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can't maneuver this on. Okay. So basically it sits inside. Slide this over a little bit. And there are four screws that hold that in. And if I didn't mess them up too bad, they're all pretty much the same self-tapping screws. So go ahead and try. I had some issues with this earlier. I think these actually have to lift up a little bit. Yeah. I think I do that just so that the, the, the sharp edge of that doesn't contact the countertop where it's resting on. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in just kind of lifting them up. Lifting the unit up a little bit as I'm doing it so they'll go in straight. I'm trying to carefully do this so I don't mess up my finger that I cut on the sharp. Sorry for that noise. Two in the back. Same deal, I need to lift this up. Make that fit. I just basically gave this thing a good cleaning. I did washed it down, scrubbed out all the old oils. I did not, I did not like replace anything on it. I'm just rebuilding it. Whoops, they're all the same. I'm just rebuilding it so that, uh, just to clean out all the gunk in there because I don't know what's gonna run through it. We're gonna use this for cold brew, like I say, so not gonna be any flavored coffee, it's just straight up <coughs> beans. So uh, that's that. So we're looking a little more like a grinder now. Well, let me put this back up here. So I got the chute. The chute, obviously, you know, like a, it comes on here. Uh, this has, man, is there more stuff coming out of there? Hope not. Uh, this has a weird little thing in that there's a, a little piece here that that bolts on and this kind of prevents stuff from falling out of it. Um, that actually goes upwards so that cl clips into here and it provides kind of like a little, little bouncing hopper. Uh, so I'm gonna actually I found another area I need to wipe out really quick. Uh, I, I didn't spend a lot of time on the motor assembly mainly because I can't disassemble it and I did not want to get any water in the motor. Now the serious manual tells you, you don't want, do not use water when you're cleaning it, um, but I'm pretty sure that's just because uh, things are the 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 burrs themselves. These guys are made of um, like a cast iron, I think. So they um, they'll actually flash rust. If you look at this, there's a little bit of rust on here, and that's just flash rust from literally it sat for a few seconds, you know drying off and it rusted a little bit. No big deal, I mean, that's not gonna affect it, but uh, they don't want you to, to have water stay on it. So I'm just, once you start using the coffee beans, the oils are gonna coat it and it's gonna be fine, but until then, um, they're susceptible to rust, so that's why they don't want you to clean it with water. So, uh, but I went ahead and cleaned it out anyways, just because I was trying to get all that old gunk out of there. So I went ahead and cleaned it with water and I scrubbed it down and dried them off. Uh, and so they're looking a little better she found another location with a little bit of... So, I can bolt this up, but the problem is if I, do, if I bolt this up, I'm gonna not be able to put the, the front on because the front 
This, either the, the base needs to be off to slide it down or that needs to be off. So leaving that off is fine. This is the front. Um, and this is the lid switch, so or the uh, sorry, the bag switch. So when this is in, when you put your bag up into here, it pushes on this and releases this switch here, as you can probably see there. So this switch just tells the unit if there's a bag on there or not. Um, it looks like so this actually needs to be wired closed. So if this is connected, then it'll work. So it just this is just a safety switch to make sure you've got a bag under it. I uh, might take that off because we're going to be using a separate uh, system to hold the the coffee. But for now, I'm just going to leave it wired how it is. So uh, what I will do is just kind of go ahead and hook these wires back up the way that they were. Should not matter because I believe this is all AC. Let's see. Okay. Those are on there, so now when this is when this is released, it, it will, when there was a bag inserted, it will uh, turn on the grinder. Um, I'm going to take a quick peek inside here just to make sure that everything is kind of buttoned up. These are tight, this is locked in, that's good. And the reason I'm checking here is that... Um, when I put this cover on, it locks these guys into place, and just, I can't access this anymore since the bottom's on, so I'm just going to do a final check. And that is how that goes right into there. So these top two screws will actually hold on both the motor plate as well as this front plate. So let me go ahead and run those down real quick. And it, it's kind of silly because this breaker has that little ring around it that tells you what's, what it's doing, but uh, there's no way to actually read what it says. It's kind of silly. And about half of these things have these little lock washers on them. Actually, less than half. I think like one out of five has these little lock washers. So, uh, in the, the name of consistency, I think I'm just going to take them all off because I'm not sure if they're misplaced or they were supposed to go there. But I don't know if they're going to help this that much. So, we run these guys in. This locks in the motor platform. This front here, and hopefully, so actually, I'm going to take one step back on that and just make sure um, that this guy, let's see, he slides in on top of that. He's got the two screws on the sides, so this does go in first. Uh, I took this apart, you know, kind of quick, so I didn't really get a super good look at how everything went together. Hoping I'm not forgetting anything here, uh, though. But the dwindling number of screws tells me that I, I'm pretty sure I'm doing good on this. All right. Uh, I guess the next thing would be to install the chute here. There's two screws that come up through the bottom here, uh, and these two screws bolt right into the bottom of here. So I'm going to. At the same time, this has also got to go in, so I need to make sure I get that installed where it is, so I'm just gonna, you're gonna have to take my word for it how this thing goes together. Um, and I've already lost the small screw, there it is. So this guy here sits up on top and simply holds this tiny little flap in. Man, it's gonna give me, this is gonna give me some problems here trying to get this guy back in. It's actually bumping up against the front panel that I just put on. Alright, so that guy's in there. Can't really see it, but there's a little flap. Actually, let me show you really quick. Uh, so, there's a little flap that sits inside there, and he basically does something. I think it kind of just deflects the ground so they don't come out so fast. So, that's what that does, and it bolts on right there. So that is how it screws in. All right, to continue, um, this guy has two screw holes way up inside there. So we're gonna go ahead and screw those right up into there. So I'm gonna try to get this in the hardest one to access first, just because that would be less of a problem later on. 
Okay, I think I got it started. We'll go ahead and get the other one started. It would be helpful to have one of those those funny screwdrivers uh, that locks the the screw in. If you've ever seen the reassembler by James May, uh, he uses a similar screwdriver to get this started. Uh, this is just going to be a great. This is going to be a great time. Oh man, hopefully I got it started. Looking good. All right. All right. Let me. Uh, Lock down this other one. All right, shoot is back in. All right, uh, next up is this kind of little flapper deal, and this kind of sits here and kind of flaps onto there. It's a little bent. I'm not really sure how it is supposed to be, so it's a little difficult to show. But um, this is there. You go. Uh, so that's kind of showing. It's a little bent, which I'm not really sure. Why? It's a little tipped. So I'm gonna try to see. All right. So this guy also kind of rests on here, and it when it when it when it drops down here, it it kind of helps prevent uh, I guess too much coffee from coming out. I really don't know what that's supposed to do. Um, so this guy screws into here. There's a couple of screws with um, bushings on them. These are pretty easy to go in. I'm gonna grab a smaller screwdriver real quick. All right. Because I should have double checked that I had all this in place. I'm seeing more bits and pieces in here I didn't really get out. Kind of disappointing, but it's a grinder, you know. It's uh, whenever everything's gonna smell like coffee tomorrow. My my bench already smells like coffee. Not the good coffee either, it looks like that, that, that crappy, that, that terrible old coffee smell. Alright, this other one, put that into there. Should kind of just rest in the center. Alright, looks good to me. I'm gonna do one quick test before I go crazy on this, and I'm actually gonna plug this thing in, just do a quick rotation test to see if the motor fires up. So let me plug it in. Okay, I heard a relay click. Um, oh, that's right, the, the switch. There we go. It's a big half horsepower motor. It's it's a lot of uh, a lot of torque on that. Go ahead and unplug it. Since I'm working on it, I don't want to hurt myself. So, uh, this should be ready to go. I'm just going to wipe the shaft down here. Just, there's like, I see a couple tiny little flash rust spots. I'm just going to wipe it off just to kind of make sure there's nothing inhibiting me installing this um, stuff back on the shaft. All right, uh, first thing. Uh, bo -bo -bo -bo. Uh, so, there's. Once again, a little flash rust on this thing, no big deal, I'm not concerned. This is the auger, so this guy basically runs like this, and it pulls the beans forward into the plates. Um, before I do that, though, we have to get the first burr on. Hopefully I'm, I'm right in putting this all back together. I haven't really studied this, and I'm just noticing on the edge of this that this has got a lot of junk on the edge. All right, that looks pretty good. Uh, the burr is looking in pretty good condition. So the next step is to remount this inside of here. And the way that goes is just like so. Uh, let me grab my larger, it's right here, my larger of the screwdrivers so I do not strip this out. I always want to use the right size screwdriver for the job. Let's see, I'm gonna rotate this to where the hole is. There we go. And then go ahead and put this into there. Perfect. Okay, so that should just kind of get that started. Same thing over here. Okay. So I won't say this is going to be like new, but it'll be certainly a little cleaner than it was when I got it. This is an old grinder. I mentioned that the motor was replaced in 98. You know, who knows? Um, there's a label on the side here 
but uh, there's no unless there's some kind of serial number decoder which you know I doubt there is for something like this uh, you know who knows how old this is so oops. let's go ahead and clamp those in guys it is really hot soda is not the thing to drink when it's hot all right, so this is going to rotate, I'm assuming, in this direction. That didn't actually look very hard. And basically, these these two burrs here, so this is the uh, secondary burr. Uh, this is, um, once again, my camera refuses to focus. This this guy right here, uh, you can see it's kind of going the opposite direction. Uh, so I believe the way it works is that these, these two kind of grind against each other inside of here. So uh, one of the things you have to tweak when you first get this going is you have to tweak the distance that this sits from there, so I'll do that too. Um, so next up, uh, this auger here slides in, uh, but before that, get ahead of myself again, there is a spring here that sits at the back. So I'm going to brush this guy off because it's one of the few things I did not brush. Alright, so there you go, nice and clean. We'll slide him into there, and that is going to sit back up against the bushing uh, that is in the motor. And then this guy has a, its own bushing. Kind of brush this out a little bit since I see a little bit of residue inside. This bushing then rests up against that spring from this side. And as this rotates, it pulls the coffee through into this set of uh, burrs. All right. Uh, I think before I put that on, I'm looking at this and wondering how, how this goes back together because I, I have now forgotten. Uh, let's see, so this has to sit up against that, which means that this has to go on to here like so. All right, and then there's screws on this, so I'm gonna have to install this first. Okay, so that kinda goes on there like so. I got two screws here and here and these guys are pretty clean I'm just gonna brush that slot out these actually came off pretty easily too if I remember correctly uh, drop these in grab my correct size straight blade and reinstall this screw here I think it's going to, need to be threaded in by hand because now it's going in. This should be good. So like I said, this uh, this pushes up against that spring and this allows us to move in and out to adjust the grind size as that wheel rotates. So this has, looks like oil impregnated bushings inside. So those, uh, those bushings will allow us to slide smoothly on the shaft, which who knows if it's actually been doing that. It was quite difficult to get off when I pulled it out of there and I think that was partially due to it being caked up with junk. I've already cleaned this out. So let's see if this slides smoothly onto the shaft here. Oh yeah, oh much better. It was nothing like that before. It was it was a giant hassle to get this thing out. So you can kind of see how it how it changes the grind size. This slides in and out like so, and then this rotates. And as this rotates, it uh, it feeds coffee into that space between these two burrs. Uh, before I put the front on, I've got a couple little pieces that gotta go in. Uh, Alright, so there's this, you can see how this kind of spins on the shaft. There's nothing tying this to this shaft here, because uh, it, it spins freely. So, uh, you know, because of that, this see I can spin this and the motor's not turning. So, what the way that they do this to prevent uh, damage to the motor, damage to the, to the uh, burrs inside, is that they use this little mechanism right here, uh, and basically this guy has a uh, uh, like a like a square shaft on this and a squared off shaft, and this mates up with this shaft as so. So this as you can see how those ma mate together. So this this drives this directly, uh, and then what it also does is it provides a slot. So when I put this in, you can see I rotate it, and then as I rotate this, that stays kind of straight across. Well, this rotates externally, so this is rotating on that shaft. What they use, they use this thing called a shear disc, and it's just a little like like quarter size, well, actually nickel size um, 
piece of metal, and this kind of looks like the, the punch outs from an electrical box or something. What this does is this slides in, okay, and this basically slides in between the two of those like so. And you can see, now that that's slid in there, it locks these two shafts together. Uh, this can still come out as uh, like that, and the shear disc pops out, and this shaft comes out. So um, that lets you replace it, and that's so if this shaft locks up, for whatever reason, this thing, you know, something gets dropped in like a rock, and it locks this up, it won't damage the burrs beyond like a little mar or something in there. It'll, it'll shear it off. This, this disc off, which can then be easily replaced. I don't know if you can get these super easy, but um, I actually had to pound this one back a little bit because it was uh, getting a little nasty. Anyways, uh, this goes into here. Shear disc in, that slides, whoops. You get it to stay in, which is you know the, the subject of that thing I was just holding on to. This guy here is a little cup-shaped deal. That slides over and that holds the shear pin in place. Okay, and this whole assembly, so you can see, still slides in and out, and that's what that squared shaft is for, because that square on the shaft can slip in and out along with that shear um, disc. Um, so it's a, it's a bit, it's really hard to see, I should say. So this is the dial, so you've got all your settings on here from, uh, you know, your coarse grind all the way up to Turkish, which is really, really fine, powdery kind of stuff. And essentially what this does is this little, little, thing inside you can't really see it moving but it moves in and out and that basically rides on this front on this on this little cup and pushes in and out <coughs> pardon me on the uh, on this this set of burrs uh, and there's an adjustment on this to right here to determine um, just what the correct setting is and there's a procedure in the service manual so uh, the next step is just basically to mount this back onto here it actually looks like someone forgot at some time to put this in here because there's these little these these rings carved on the outside of this looks like from these these little blades or these little fan deals right here and it looks like those were actually rubbing up against this causing that problem so hopefully this actually works so let's see I think so the way this I think works is you have to basically kind of slide this into place and they, they give you these really long screws so you thread them in like so and the idea here I think is that is that you slowly kind of torque them in and as you tow these screws in it you know it centers this up and it it uh, locks this in at the correct depth. Um, now like I said, there's actually a procedure for setting the um, what this does, how far this pushes in and out. And I'm gonna have to do that since I've taken it all apart. I've readjusted where those where those two burrs sit. So these essentially should be locked down, which it appears that they are. Okay. All right, uh, I'm gonna do another quick startup and see if this thing makes a loud, loud noise. So let me uh, zoom out a little here. So there's any kind of smoke or flame. Plug this guy back in. Okay. Hit the bag. It's quiet. That's good. Now I also don't hear any 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 touching, which is good because you don't want this to push those two um, grinding wheels too close together because that, that can be a problem. So I take a quick look inside. Looks okay. All right, so uh, next step is just to finish up the bottom, I guess, and put the lid back on. Let's slide this back a little bit so you can, guys can kind of get a better uh, visual of this. Bottom's pretty easy. I'm just going to leave it plugged in because uh, I have to do this adjustment anyways and I'm not put my hands inside it all. Um, I'm gonna kind of blow this guy out here. So uh, there's basically a crumb tray here. Um, this is a little bent. I'm gonna try to unbend this really quick. Perfect. All right, got that little bend out of there. It was slightly bent. I think it still slightly has this little bow in it. No big deal though, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a coffee grinder. So 
this guy kind of sits on the outside, pushes up against there. There's a there's a screw on either side. Let me grab those. Let me grab these guys here. In. Okay. Well, if it's not going to be a giant pain. Right. Cool. So that guy's in, locked in. Um, then there's a tray. This guy here, and then this guy kind of slides in the bottom, like so. And you've got yourself a, a crumb tray. So if stuff falls out, you can pull this out, uh, and then this can be emptied. So, I'm gonna put that back in. All right, last thing here is a lid. Here's the lid. Just a really simple. It's supposed to have a, it's supposed to have a sliding like full door on it. Didn't come with it, and they're absurdly expensive. Like they're like they're like a hundred dollars just for the door alone, which I guess is a commonly lost item. So I'm just not gonna be concerned with it. Uh, actually, just thought about it before I put that back on. It'd be kind of important to have something to pour the coffee into because you know if you look inside here, it's just that. So uh, this is the hopper. Um, I'm gonna tell you one thing, this, this little uh, PVC bar going through does not look factory. I think someone added this as like some kind of finger guard. So I will reinstall it. But uh, yeah, looking at the specs on the sheet, there's supposed to be some kind of like grill that sits on top. I think someone lost it. Uh, other issue, which I may not tackle, um, this guy right here is like this squishy little foam stuff. It's supposed to sit around, sit around there, and then kind of keep things, uh, I guess, I guess stuff from splashing out. Problem is, it's a mess. Uh, it is starting to melt, and actually, I had to scrape a bunch of it off the metal. So I am not going to use this. I'll see if I can find something similar to this, maybe at the home store. See if I can reuse, you know, make something else of my own. For now. Um, Hopper drops in, it should just kind of fit right in there. Double check that it is. Looks like it's going right into where it's supposed to go. So that just kind of rests inside. And then this bit goes on top. Now I don't know. I don't know which direction this goes in. I'm gonna guess it's supposed to go this way, just because. So at the front of the hopper, and I think that you'd fold the lid backwards. So I'm gonna consider that the correct way. Run these screws in. This lid, by the way, also a little bent. This this poor machine's had a had a rough life. It looks like probably lived in a grocery store for a while. Then someone bought it and kind of beat it up. Go ahead and get this guy fastened in. All right. So we'll go ahead and uh, do a quick test out that anything's changed. Click the bag switch. Definitely a little buzzy there. The, uh, yeah. But I mean, what do you expect? You know, it's, uh, I think it's the lid that's buzzing. Not a big deal though. Uh, maybe it's a, it's a grinder. All right, uh, let's go ahead and uh, do a quick alignment for the um, for the burrs, and I think we're gonna call it a night. All right, so uh, just flip checking the manual here for the uh, for the grinder, and uh, it's got a um, grind adjustment section, which says you can do this when it's you know when it's grinding too coarse or it's not grinding correctly, or you put new grinding burrs in it. I haven't done that, but. Um, since I have no idea how long it's been since the last time this was adjusted, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the procedure. Especially since I've removed those those burrs, cleaned behind them, and put them back in, they might be sitting further apart than uh, than they were. Uh, so it basically says go ahead and um, loosen these retainer screws. One, wait, oh sorry. First it says set this to the finest setting. So this is the Turkish. Uh, so, so loosen these guys one turn only. So we're horizontal. So, whoops, we'll do 
one, one. All right, those are loose. So you can see that kind of sits there loose. And now it says um, I need to push the bag switch, hit the start button, and while it's running, uh, turn this inward until I start hearing the burrs touching, which is like a metallic chirping noise, I guess, is what it says in the manual. Back it off until it stops, and then uh, clamp these guys back down. So I just want to explain that before I do it, because it does make a little noise. I took the lid back off since that thing rattles like crazy, but uh, we'll see if I can do this. Hopefully we don't break th something. Okay, so it's on. I'm gonna slowly bring this together. So right there, I guess. Yep. So right, right there is the, and I'll just hit that again. Right there is the finest grind. So let me go ahead and clamp these guys in. All right. Let me see if I actually no noise, and it's it's definitely cool. So we actually did have to adjust it in a little bit from where it was, uh, but yeah, so we should be ready to go. And it says once you adjust that in to, the, to that, that's the set point. Once you set it to that, all the rest of these should operate properly. So it was either slightly worn or uh, it wasn't clean when, I, when it was originally set. Uh, we had to set it a little closer. So no big deal though. Uh, so it seems to be working. Uh, we'll give it a shot uh, tomorrow at work and see how this thing grinds. Hey guys, thanks for checking out the video. Uh, sorry that it's not extremely exciting, but actually uh, something my coworkers kind of asked for. And that would be kind of fun. I mean, uh, you know, who puts together a, a coffee grinder? Whatever. Um, there it is. Grindmaster uh, 875, I want to say. Uh, so hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully get a bunch more years of use out of this thing. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.